Hi everybody, how are we all doing? I hope you're having a good weekend so far. So today is Saturday, the 8th of November 2014, and I went to see Interstellar last night, um, the latest film from uh, the visionary director. The you know everybody likes him, and not everybody likes him as well. But Christopher Nolan's latest epic, uh, sci-fi epic, um, which was just mind-bendingly beautiful. Um, after I saw Gravity last year. I basically said to myself that, you know, because of how intense and so, you know, how how much immersion there was with that film, I said to myself, I never ever want to go to space, ever. But with Interstellar, I think that's kind of reversed that notion now. Um, basically, what, what the, the basic plot, the story is just, is about, um, we're, we're in a distant future on Earth, um, basically a lot of uh, natural resources have been depleted. Um, now it's all about um, you know farmers growing corn to you know for, for the earth to survive, and um, every so often um, a certain period of time there is this huge cloud of dust storm that comes over. I don't know whether it's happening across the world, um, but we're in a certain place in America where this occurs, um, and it's basically the, the entire sort of town of where uh, Matthew McConaughey's character um, Cooper and his children Tom and uh, Murphy are both are all um, living along with uh, their granddad Donald played by John Lithgow um, they're all you know they're having to block their close their windows close their doors lock 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 the entire house down because this dust storm basically just covers the entire area and um, it's quite harmful as well for them to breathe in so you know they have to wear protective masks and goggles and such um, but at the same time this is happening you know Cooper's trying to find a way to save the human race save the planet you know he used to be a pilot he's, he's an engineer and um, so he's well versed in all, in all things astrophysics and um, you know NASA related stuff you know he's been on space missions before he's piloted certain um, space shuttles as well um, but that was like a good decade or so ago. Um, there's actually one point in the film where uh, when Cooper goes to see Murphy's uh, teacher, you know, they're saying how the Apollo missions were not real. And Cooper was like, well, well hang on, what do you mean they, they were not real? You, you believe that they were nonsense, that nothing, none of this happened? You know, how are we supposed to teach our children what's going on beyond our own atmosphere? if you're just going to turn around and tell them that no sorry kids the Apollo missions didn't happen we never flew to the moon this that and the other <laughs> so he was not happy about that in which case he got his daughter suspended that was lovely um, but um, certain events are happening and you kind of get the idea that there is something going on but you're not too sure what's happening um, like for example Murph says that she noticed in her bedroom books were falling off the shelf she had a model of the Apollo uh, shuttle, I believe it was Apollo 11. Um, when that fell off the shelf, it broke in half. And she put it down to ghosts, pol poltergeists. Um, and it was a case of, okay, your mind is starting to think, all right, is this now more of a supernatural sort of nature, even though the film's more of a scientific uh, fiction nature. So you start wondering through, through your mind what exactly is happening. Um, you know, these books are falling off the shelves. They're not at random. Something, there's a pattern emerging. When the next dust storm appears, um, that's when Coop goes into Merv's bedroom and notices the floor. Something's happened on the floor. And they put it down to, you know, the anomaly they put it down to is gravity. So your mind really starts to wander. And this is the thing about Christopher Nolan's films, is that he, the films are so mind-bending. Like, for example, Inception. It's so mind-bending. You have to do your best to keep up with everything that's happening. Granted, throughout the rest of the whole film, there are some massive plot holes. However, that aside, the way that this film was done is beautiful. I mean, you know, if you if you certain films come to mind when you're watching this, okay? Uh, for me, anyway, personally, there was Signs, there was Inception, as I already mentioned. Um, oh, what else? It's 2001: A Space Odyssey. Um, bit of Prometheus in there as well, and. Um, I'm trying to think of what else, but it's escaped my mind. But those, you know, there are a whole load of other films that have elements from these films you see you see in in in, in Interstellar. Uh, we've got Matt Damon appearing in this in this film as well. So Michael Caine is in there, and also not to mention um, Anne Hathaway as well. She she's uh, 
she's one of the main characters of the film as well. And Casey Affleck and Je Jessica Chastain who play the older versions of both Tom and um, and Murph. There's basically, as I say, um, what is happening, the, the, the Earth is dying and Murph, not Murph, sorry, Coop is meeting up with um, Michael Caine's character, Dr. Brand, and he's basically saying, look, we're building this shuttle, we've sent a dozen astronauts into this wormhole that suddenly appeared 50 years ago. We don't know how or why, and, you know, the NASA believe it's part of a higher being as such, you know, aliens. That's the other film I was going to mention, Contact, as well. So there's an element of contact regarding a message that has been sent down, essentially, or someone's basically saying, hey, we can see you, come to our side of the galaxy, or come to this galaxy through this wormhole. So all of this is happening, and your mind is racing, as I say, and um, without giving too much away, all I'm going to say is that you get to the point of the film where you look and you realise the pattern that was emerging. You start to realise what is actually going on. And then it questions you. The question that you ask is, it asks you this question, is it possible for us to travel into the future and be able to look into the window into your past? And that's all I'm going to say on that, because that pretty much kind of gives away the element of the film. So I'm not going to say anything further to it, but... All I will say is that it is it is mind-bendingly beautiful. Um, there were um, robot characters in this one, two in particular, both named Tars and also Case, and they are hilarious. Okay, the the other thing I love about this film is that despite the seriousness of it throughout the entire time it was playing, there are gaps of humour in there. They're well positioned, and it's it's really good. I, th I didn't think Christopher Nolan was was uh, averse to a bit of humour, but he adds in that little humour. When it's when it's when it counts when it's needed it's it's not like it's forced in there like other films normally are you know the humor I think is well placed um, it's pretty good and um, there's you know it it just asks that question as I say is it possible that we can travel to the future and somehow look look back on our past you know it's it really does ask that question and. It's, it's just incredible, is all I'm going to say. So yeah, and the other interesting thing is that the way that time passes when they're traveling, when they've gone through the wormhole, they travel to a, to a certain planet that they believe is habitable, and um, basically time is so slow on this particular planet that every hour is the equivalent to seven years. That's, that's just incredible. It really is incredible. So. Um, Watch it, see it, and you've got to see it in IMAX because it is made for IMAX. We know how Christopher Nolan loves his film, how he loves IMAX, and he he is just, yeah, he loves it. Um, so you've got to watch it in IMAX. Don't watch it in any other format. Watch it in IMAX because that's what it was made for, and see just how epic this film is. It is beautiful. Um, I'd say that it does rival gravity in a lot of sense. Yes, it's not in 3D, because Nolan doesn't like 3D, we know that. Um, but so, so it's not in 3D, but again, just just watch it and just be in awe of this spectacle. I think it's amazing. Um, and it will surprise you in how science fiction movies can be done. And who knows, maybe Nolan has now started something for future movies to be based on as well. I mean, as I say, he's taken all these other movies, Contact, Signs, Prometheus, 2001 A Space Odyssey, his own movie Inception, all of those elements in, into this one film. Who knows what can be done from, from there? That's all I'm going to say. So, uh, yeah, it's brilliant. Go see it. Let me know what you thought. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.